Hi, folks. It's Larry, Larry Miller, and I and Colonel Jeff and everyone associated with our show hopes you're about to have a great Thanksgiving because you know what? It's a wonderful holiday and it means an awful lot. And I'm going to have it. And with my family, we're here on Milleronia. And, uh, well, Colonel Jeff would be one of our guests too, but he can't make it. He got sick on those three helicopter rides that it takes him to get out here to Milleronia. Because remember, that's the way we transport him. And uh, he's, uh, well, thank God he's feeling a tiny bit better, but he can't move and he can't eat and he can't do kind of anything. But he's, he can still be funny, and he is. In any case, uh, we're going we're gonna to play for you one of our classics, one of our reruns. And uh, you know what? Say a prayer for Colonel Jeff, too, when you say all your big prayers uh, for Thanksgiving anyway. And uh, we hope you have a terrific one. We're going to have one here. And just between you and me, entre nous, I think maybe we're going to promote Colonel Jeff to, well, instead of three helicopter rides to get out here, maybe something better. Maybe one of those James Bond planes that Goldfinger got sucked out of. And, uh, you know, those are great planes. They, they really are. They, they're really high-class planes. And you always have an extra suit of yours in there. And there's a, there's a stewardess, a flight attendant, slash waitress and she's always wow she looks fabulous she's always from thailand or something and got the whole outfit on and she'll bring you she knows what you want she'll bring you a martini so in any case just between me and you i think colonel jeff might be in line for that not because he got sick on the three helicopter rides by the way but he's due for that anyway he's due for promotions and all sorts of things so are you folks have a good promotion on thanksgiving have a great blessing and a great day, and look at everyone you like in your family, and especially the ones you don't like, and give them a hug. Not a long one, just a regular hug. And we'll see you soon, folks. Bye. And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who really wants a great Thanksgiving dinner. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And thank you for so much. Oh, I'll have to talk about that later, but I, I must tell you, happy Thanksgiving. Happy, healthy, wonderful Thanksgiving. And I'm going to talk about that later, too, because I and Colonel Jeff are back here on Milleronia, and Colonel Jeff has taken his three helicopter rides to the secret part of the Pacific Ocean where, well, Milleronia is. It's a gorgeous day today, folks. It it, it really is. And uh, there's no better place, I have to tell you, there's no better place for Thanksgiving than Milleronia. I can't tell you what a good meal we make. There is, by the way, no vegetables allowed on Thanksgiving dinner here on Milleronia. None. When I say none, I don't mean, well, have a few. Or, what the heck, why not? I mean none. As in zero. And uh, we have the best vegetables all year long. We grow them here. And people love them, too. And they know they're they're good for them. And uh, that's all fine. But no one, no citizens of Milleronia ever have anything green or vegetable-like on Thanksgiving dinner. And they don't for a very important reason. I say so. That's the big reason. And they know that if they get caught, well, they get caught with anything green on Thanksgiving. Well, that's a trip right up to volcano number one. And they can explain why they did that to Ali Dungmeister, who, as you know, is our guide 
at uh, volcano number one and volcano number two. And by the way, we're not being cruel here to them. I'm not tossing them in volcano number two for having vegetables on Thanksgiving. It's just uh, volcano number one. And uh, Ali just gets them by the collar and by the belt of the pants and gives them the bums rush right up volcano number one. And he tells them what he thinks of how they disrespected Thanksgiving by having vegetables on it. And I think you can guess what he thinks. So at any rate, uh, it's a, it's going to be a great Thanksgiving. I hope you have one too. Oh, oh, I can't wait to tell you about it. Uh, but that, of course, by the way, what, as always, what makes me so happy at the start of every show is that that music, I love it. Of course, that's the Ralph Branca Orchestra and the Ruth Gruber Dancers featuring boy tenor Edward Starkman asking the musical question, with interest rates so low, where can I get a decent return on my daylight savings? Well, I would say, April. I think that's the way to go, is to look forward to April. And uh, good question, Edward. It's a heck of a question, but uh, yeah, go for April. Because that's, unless you just landed from Jupiter, that's how we turn daylight savings back. And I love it. I've said, said this to you before. I love that we have daylight savings time. I love that we can change something like time. I love that we do change something like time. i I, I just can't say how much. I know some people want daylight savings time to be, well, thrown away. They want daylight savings time to not exist anymore, anywhere. And uh, I would just advise them, among other things, to avoid coming to Milleronia. Because if you say something like that on Milleronia, well, folks, you're going to volcano number three. I know I haven't mentioned number three before. Volcano number one is, well, horrifying. You, <laughs> well, it just evaporates you in lava, a big pool of lava there, instantly. And uh, volcano number two is, well, it's, if you can believe it, it's worse than number one. It's far worse, in fact. And you, you keep bumping your head on outcroppings and little gargoyles that we place there intentionally to just keep you kind of bouncing back and forth and really unhappy. But we have a volcano number three. And all I can tell you is for right now, in fact, I, I haven't mentioned it yet, and I shouldn't have mentioned it casually, especially the day before a great holiday, holiday like Thanksgiving. But you know what? You wouldn't like number three. You wouldn't like any of them. Let's be honest. You're, you're, you're not out of your minds. Neither am I. Well, I'm a little out of my mind. But you know what? You wouldn't like number one or number two or number three. And Ollie would show you why. And also Ruth Gruber, who is heading our dancers today, just passed away. She was 105 years old. And I'm mentioning her because she, well, she had a wonderful life and, and did many great things. And she was also very well known because she documented a thousand Jewish refugees after World War II. Plus, she got them here. She brought them to America, helping with all their applications. And that's, well, that's pretty great. When she, uh, when she got up there, I'm sure the first thing she got from God was a smile and a wink. Well, I, we, we all want one of those, right? A smile and a wink? <laughs> In any case, Good work, Ruth. And speaking of which, the great Ralph Branca just passed away. Rest in peace. Resquiet cut and pace. And uh, Ralph Branca was a great pitcher who was a pitcher 13 years in the major leagues. And uh, he was a pitcher for the Dodgers for 11 of those years, I believe, and then moved for one year each to the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees. And as I said to Colonel Jeff, Yankees, does everyone wind up on the Yankees? Does everyone at the beginning or the end of the whole career just, you know, and now he's a Yankee. Well, I, I hope he was a great one, but he was a terrific fella. 
Oh, Ralph Branca. He was born, by the way, in 1926 in Mount Vernon, New York, and he was the 15th of 17 children, in case anyone ever asks you. But that's quite a thing. I mean, that's what caught my eye reading his biography, that, you know, 15 of 17 children, that's a lot of kids. I don't care where you're from. That's a bunch of kids. In fact, it reminded me, I told Colonel Jeff that uh, when our first son was born, and he's the one who's a Marine now and deployed in the Middle East, and uh, you know what? When he was born, our first kid, we a friend of ours suggested uh, this uh, nice woman as a as a someone you could hire for a nanny for two weeks or one week, but she could come live at your house. And I went to pick her up. We got her for two weeks, and uh, I think I should know this, shouldn't I? And uh, I went to pick her up. I think it was a Tuesday night, and it was into East. L.A. She was from Belize, uh, which is a very nice name for a country. I don't, I don't know really what they do much, but I knew about it from her now. Because speaking of kids, she was the. She told me in the ride back to our house, she was the twenty third of twenty four kids. Is that enough for you? Because I, I think it is twenty four kids, and I said to her. But I'm sure everyone else says, which is, even though I'm driving her, I said, 24 kids. And she turned to me and said, no TV. And I thought, no TV? Is that the the reason, the the motivation, the excuse or, or, or something? And she, no TV. Oh, so every night it dawned on me. So that means every night at around 8.45... I don't know if they have any good TV in Belize. I bet you, Dollar, they didn't have it a long, 50 years ago. But, I mean, they didn't have Get Smart or anything like that or Batman. You know, nothing you'd really want to watch. And uh, they had nothing. They had no TV. Could have been a, a talk show. Could have been anything. But there was none of it. So around 8.45, at this point, the husband and wife, her parents, just look at each other and say, well, we... Might as well, you want to just go jump in bed and whatever, five or ten minutes, we might as well just do it again. Who know, they, at this point, do they want each other? Do they like each other? Do, you, do they even speak to each other? Who knows? Well, you'd figure, by the way, they got to say something. Wouldn't you have to speak and say something? Even if they just said to each other, as they were locked together, even if they just said it, shrugged and both said, no TV. And you know what? So she was the, um, God bless her. She was great. And uh, 23rd of 24 kids. And uh, so <laughs> thank you to her. And God bless you, Ralph, Bl- Ralph Branca. And God bless you to Ruth Gruber. You had great lives. And I hope you're having a great one in heaven right now. And by... Amazon and PayPal and a great surprise that I'll tell you about very soon. Well, about a minute and a half. And, uh, well, we love Amazon and PayPal here. I think Amazon is one of the greatest companies in the world because, as I've said before, they do three things no other company can do. Number one, order whatever you want, whatever you want. There are no limits, no restrictions, nothing. Order whatever you want. Number two, they already have it. They don't have to call the company that makes it. They don't have to borrow one. They don't have to call a friend. They have it. And it's just waiting to go to you. They have it. And that great Indiana Jones warehouse of theirs. Oh, folks, this one is a mile long and a mile wide and a mile high and a mile deep. So believe me, they have everything. And what you do is you want to go to Amazon. And oh, the number three, first of all, this is the best part of Amazon. They send us a percentage of whatever you order. So uh, I think that's the best part because they send us here at the Larry Miller Show. They send us in cash a percentage whatever of whatever you order. And Colonel Jeff and I put it right 
in our savings account, a big steel box that we use because we save that money for our next big fancy fried chicken dinner and two drinks beforehand in a different place. And as I've said before, yes, we may, may, we might, might call Dr. Chris again and invite him to our next big fancy fried chicken dinner with two drinks beforehand in a different place. But boy, I think that's pretty great for Amazon. So what you do, if you're going to Amazon, by the way, don't just go there. You could go there on your iPhone. You could go there on your laptop. But it took me a while to think of those two. I'm not, I like being this way, but I'm not that bright. I, how many times, how many shows have we done where I can't have to keep saying, yeah, you could just turn on the thing in your hand. In any case, do that. Go to our website. Don't go to Amazon yourself. Go to our website. That's LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a new one. Nothing like a playful trumpet. Boy, does that sound like a metaphor for something. I, I don't even know what. But uh, yes, do that. Go. There's a banner on our website that says Amazon on it. Click that and we'll take you to Amazon. You click the banner on our website and go to sleep. Take a nap. To, you know, put yourself in your favorite lazy boy chair. You could watch a ball game or something, but there's no need. Get in that big comfy chair and get yourself a cold beer from the fridge and lean that chair back and put a magazine over your face, you'll be out cold, and we'll get you to Amazon. And by PayPal. We'll do the same thing for you there. PayPal, boy, folks, you know, they make you feel like you're saving the world, and who knows, maybe you are, because PayPal, you know what? If you enjoy my show, and why wouldn't you, and you'd like to send a few bucks to help out, and why wouldn't you? You can do it through PayPal. You know what? They really help. Oh, folks, instead of saying, this is what I like to do. Instead of saying, donate or, or pay what you like, I, I like to say, buy us some drinks. That's a better way of thinking of it. So there are different levels, you see. There's level one through five, all the way up to... We're driving to Florida! <laughs> Yes, I love that. By the way, I hope you get a round of applause like that at your Thanksgiving dinner when you start to cut into that, oh, the first part, you know. I'm a good carver, by the way. When you start to cut and uh, slice that, uh, I felt a little shy about saying this. Well, I don't know why. You know, the B-R-E-A-S-T. That's right. But you know what? I hope you get a round of applause like that and for your whole Thanksgiving dinner. So look for the PayPal banner on our website. They have a banner, too, on our website, which, again, is LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have had the fish. <laughs> See, I won't say the word breast, but I can make a lower-tracked GI joke anytime. <laughs> At any rate... Every little bit helps us keep the old leg lamp lit, and we thank you. Thank you to everyone who's contributed already. And thank you to those of you who are just about to, to make sure you have a great Thanksgiving. And by, well, this is really something for us now. And by me, because folks, we have the Larry Miller store open. It has just opened, thanks to Colonel Jeff. The Larry Miller store is LarryMillerShow.com slash store. So you know what? Go there because we have, uh, well, I think we have the best T-shirts in the world. I'm very proud that the LarryMillerShow.com slash store or the Larry Miller store. <laughs> it's my store and I can't even say it. But you know what? I'm very proud that it's open. Good work to Colonel Jeff. Well, here are some of the T-shirts, by the way. You'll see when you go on it. The Larry Miller Drinking Society shirt. 
which features the famous LMDS logo, and our semi-secret slogan, Nominum Quid Geminus, with the question mark, which is Latin for, you call that a double? And the brand new t-shirt also, Keep Calm and Larry On, that's not just a mantra for life. It's the motto sensation that's sweeping the nation. Both he and I thought that might be a little dumb to say, but that tells you something else about, well, me and Colonel Jeff. We thought it might be, but then we said, ah, oh, the heck with it. And we decided, that's not dumb at all. Besides, if it is, it's just perfect. It's just, just about dumb enough for us. And finally, you, you want to show how tough you are with something from the Larry Miller store. You, you, you can, then you gotta look at, you gotta get the brand new, I survived volcano number two, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Shirt. All shirts are printed on demand. And that's so you can choose from a variety of colors. And they're available both in gentlemen's and ladies' cut tees. I don't know if I've used those words before, like gentleman and lady. You know what? But why not? We are here on Milleronia. Yeah, go to LarryMillerShow.com slash store. So thank you, folks. Go to the Larry Miller store, and I'm glad it's open now. And uh, that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke of the week. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, Colonel Jeff found this one, and it, it made us both giggle. There's a Big, fancy jetliner going to Paris. And uh, in the back, in the economy section there, there's uh, a beautiful young blonde woman. And uh, she's going to Paris, and uh, she's very excited. And she says, about a half hour, hour into the flight, she just uh, walks up front there and looks through the, the little beaded curtain there into the first class section. And she sees, she notices immediately, one of the seats is empty in first class. And, she, well, she just walks right through the beaded curtain and sits down in the seat in first class. And uh, one of the flight attendants, of course, just sees her do that instantly. And uh, well, that flight attendant, you know, just walks up to her and says, I'm sorry, miss, but uh, you have to go back to the, uh, the economy class there. You can't just sit down in first class. And she looks up at him and she says, I'm blonde, I'm beautiful, and I'm going to Paris in first class. And he, a little surprised to hear that, he says, well, uh, I understand, but no, you can't. That, this, is a, this is a business we have here. This is a giant airliner. And no, you can't just come up to first class and sit down in it because you haven't paid for a first class ticket. So uh, please get up now and take yourself back to economy class. And she looks up at him again and says, uh, I'm blonde, I'm beautiful, and I'm going to Paris in first class. And he says to well, you know what? Uh, no, you're not. I, I'm sorry to get a little annoyed with you here, but, uh, you know, I, you, you're not just going to first class because you think you want to. So get up now. And as soon as he starts to say this again, he notices one of the other flight attendants, the head of the flight attendants, is just motioning him there up in the kitchen section. He's motioning him to come over. So he does that. He gives a sour look at this young woman, and he goes up there to see his, his boss in the kitchen area. And the head of the attendants leans over and whispers and puts down his cup of coffee and says, You know what? I'm married to a blonde. I know how to handle this. Relax and start the salads, and uh, I'll go take care of her. And he does. He puts his coffee cup down and, well, strolls down the aisle right at the young blonde woman. And uh, he, he leans down and smiles. And uh, he whispers something in her ear. And no sooner does he finish, it's just very short, than she gets up and turns immediately and, and walks right back to economy class. And he walks back to the kitchen and Picks his coffee cup up again, and his friend says, "How did you do that? What? 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 
What did you do? What did you tell her? And he says, uh, oh, I just told her first class isn't going to Paris. <laughs> you got a kick out of that. It reminded me of a... <laughs> Reminded me of an old joke. I remember the saying that uh, that uh, you know, on uh, an airplane with well, first class, business class, economy class. That uh, one of the one of the there was a young fella in in economy class, and he was his friend as they got on the plane was uh, getting into first class, but he's not. He was going back to economy class, and his friend said to him, "You know, why don't we see if you can." Maybe I can get you into first class. And, and he says to him, no, no, economy class is safer. And uh, his friend says, what are you, what are you talking about? Why, why, is it, why is it safer? And the guy says, what, did you ever hear of a plane backing into a mountain? <laughs> In any case, I, I hope you like that one. That's a pretty good joke. If you do, pass it on to your loved ones or family as we always say. And that brings me to my second favorite part of the show, The Poetry Corner. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I'm feeling very lovely. And not just because of Thanksgiving, but maybe... But it's nice to be back on, well, my island, Milleronia, with you, Colonel Jeff, and you, our audience. It means a lot to me. And this is a great poem. It's, uh, it's not long. It's a short one. It's written by Henry Van Dyke, who was a great poet, from, lived from 1852 to 1933. He's American. He was born in Germantown, Pennsylvania, was a professor at Princeton. How many of us can say that? And he was friends with Helen Keller. In 1913, President Wilson assigned him to be ambassador to the Netherlands and Luxembourg. And that was apparently at the same time. And when he, this guy did quite a bit. When World War II broke out, he was instrumental in getting Americans out of Europe and getting them relief. So this is quite a guy, and uh, he was a good scholar, and he wrote a poem that I'm going to read to you now called Time Is by Henry Van Dyke. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice, but for those who love, time is not. Isn't that nice? That's a lovely, thank you, Henry Van Dyke. That's a lovely look. At, well, what he thought of love. And those are good thoughts, too. Yet it's too slow for those who wait. Funny how a great poet can really, with simple words, as Colonel Jeff said before, he and I, he said, like more involved poems as a rule that have a, well, a certain design and style and rhyme. And uh, he said, but I think you'll like this one. And I do. And I hope you do too, folks. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. M M M Magic Movie Moment. And this one is a great magic movie. It's a great moment, I think, too. But it's the movie is wonderful. Father of the Bride from 1950. There was another version made with Steve Martin recently, just a few years ago. But, boy, this is a great one. It's Father of the Bride, directed by Vincent Minnelli, starring Spencer Tracy, Joan Bennett, Elizabeth Taylor, Maroney Olsen, Rusty Tamblin, who was a child actor, but later shortened his name to Russ. And that's a name you may know as Russ Tamblin, who was one of the stars of West Side Story. And it's a great movie, folks. See it. It's, it's black and white. And Spencer Tracy is wonderful in everything he does. And, well, 
This is about a suburban family, and uh, Spencer Tracy is a lawyer, and he finds out his young daughter, who's 18, that's Elizabeth Taylor, but she falls in love, and she tells them one night at the dinner table that she wants to take the next step, and uh, and her boyfriend, Buckley, and she are going to get married. And, well, uh, suburban wedding plans get going, and it keeps going crazy, and all the planning and choices, but it all works out. And you know what? It it reminded me that the great magic movie moment in this movie goes through the whole movie. It's not just a moment. It shows us. It's very entertaining. There's great comedy. There's great romance. There's great drama. But it shows us that as things go wrong and get crazy, uh, well... Spencer Tracy and his wife get through it. And, well, Elizabeth Taylor and and her boyfriend get through it too. And whether they have an argument or not, they get through it and it just keeps getting better. And it reminded me of my life and yours and the Colonel's too. If we just keep our heads screwed on straight, you know what? We'll get through it. And well, there was well, there were wonderful scenes of... At well, at the big, uh, at the big planning party, at the big, the big for the for the wedding, the big, uh, well, the the you're engaged party before everything else, and that's at their house. Of uh, and Spencer Tracy spends so much time trying to make sure that everyone and the house is jam packed and everyone's so nicely dressed, and uh, he tries to make sure that everyone has a drink, and it's funny the way he does it. But he works hard the way everyone should at something like that. And he, and he just, we well, can't quite do it. And then he does it. And then he, he well, he, he has, carries one tray in. Then he has to ask the bartender he hired, can you do this? Can you get more martinis for this and for that? And he gets in and he's, he's really going crazy. And then finally, all right, he finishes it and he accomplishes it. And he now goes to be with his daughter and his family for, well, for the engagement party. But it's over. It's done. He's missed it. And there's a sweetness and a sadness to it. But you know what? We can see he's all right. He he did his work that day. And he made sure the party was okay. And he made sure that everyone got a good drink. Or five of them. And you know what? Everything that happens in the movie happens that way. And whether it's the wedding or the reception, which is at their house too. And there's a fight between the couple before that happens. And the point is, everything works out if they all just keep their heads screwed on. And they do. And that's why it's a good lesson to us. It is to me, and it will be to you. If you haven't seen this, Father of the Bride from 1950, directed by Vincent Minnelli, Starring Spencer Tracy, Joan Bennett, Elizabeth Taylor, Maroney Olson, Rusty Tamblin, and so many others. It's a terrific movie. And I hope you think so, too. Go go see it sometime. You know, get it somewhere. You'll be glad you did. And I think, I hope your lives have the same learning and successful moments in them, just when you think everything's going loony. And it reminded me, folks... Happy Thanksgiving. Today, when we're first airing the show, is Thanksgiving. And it was. I hope you had a great one. I hope you had your family well and friends. And whether it's just a couple of friends and you, or whether, as in our case, well, we have uh, one of our kids with us. And, uh, well, the other one is uh, on duty as a Marine. And you know what? Then we had some friends here from Milleronia. And we brought out my wife's sister and her family, and we brought those out just between me and you. They had four helicopter rides they had to take, just entre nous, okay? You don't have to say that to them. Oh, I four. You had to take four. But you know what? We had a terrific Thanksgiving, and it reminded me of something I want to say with an exclamation point. I want good stuffing. Why can't I have it? I used to always have great stuffing. It reminded me every year, I think, 
I had great stuffing, but I think the last year was 1968. And I mean real stuffing. Boy, oh boy, you know where they, oh, it's so good and moist. And it's made with all the things I love in stuffing. All the things you love in stuffing. But stuffing today kind of stinks. It, it artichokes and mushrooms with a foreign name. You know what I mean, where someone will say, well, I made this. These mushrooms are, you know, Fensterbenster mushrooms from, you know, from Prussia or something like that. There is no Prussia, you idiot. Well, you know what? These mushrooms are. And uh, pine nuts, walnuts, any nuts. I, I, I don't know why we insist on having people make stuffing today. And it's it's not that it's horrible. It's okay. That's the best thing you can say. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. But I'm telling you, if the Indians in 1621 could see that stuffing, they would scalp everyone. I think that would be the, <laughs> that would be the bottom line. No broccoli and stuffing for you. Uh, scalp them all. In fact, then put the scalp in. <laughs> Mushrooms stuffing is better with scalp in it. You know what people are putting in rice, stuffing now? Rice. Rice. And I hate that. What, what's, what's wrong with you? I want to say what's wrong with all of us is they're not making stuffing to me. Is there any bread in these things? Any breading? Any potatoes? I, all right. I think we all understand that Thanksgiving is not a great diet day. All right. Do we all understand that? I think we do. And I think we're all okay with that. It's Thanksgiving for crying out loud. And I remember stuffing. I remember loving stuffing. And as I said, not after 1968. Why did we stop? I want something that's bready, gooey, salty, some onions, a little celery, but turkey-ish because it's cooked in the turkey, right? Wasn't that what stuffing was? Don't you put it all in, cut it all up, get it in the turkey? You know how, you know, it's, it's not an attractive image, but you get it in the turkey. And it reminded me, stovetop stuffing is great. The brand of a stovetop stuffing. Now, you know when you eat it, it's, you know it's terrible when you eat it, but the only thought you have is, hey, this is good. I like this. But what happened to real stuffing? It went from being made by Norman Rockwell to being made by Al Gore. And here on Milleronia, by the way, we have great stuffing. Once again, it's by a ruling of the ruler. That's me. But we have to make great stuffing because I love it. Everyone loves it. You love it. What happened to real stuffing where, oh boy, when you're, well, it's like that, I'm not mentioning Norman Rockwell again. It's like that great painting of his where they're bringing out the turkey, then it's just done. And you know when the mom would bring out the big bowl of stuffing that she took out of the turkey, of course, and it's a big bowl too. It's a lot of stuffing. And everyone is thrilled to see it. What about mashed potatoes, by the way? Isn't that one of the great things of a Thanksgiving dinner? Gravy, turkey, mashed potatoes, and then all of them again. What's wrong with that? It's, I never had sweet potatoes or candied yams growing up, and I never missed them. I never wanted them. Colonel Jeff said the same thing. I, I don't want those things. And... So I think we should make a deal, by the way. That's like, like Milleronia. Let's start with no vegetables on Thanksgiving, okay? Why don't we start with that? You and I eat vegetables every day, 364 days a year. Let's make one day nothing, none of them. And let's just say the only authorized food for Thanksgiving could be turkey, gravy, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and the cherry on top, so to speak, cranberry sauce. Now, I'm just saying to you, like stuffing, you know what? No homemade cranberry sauce. Again, please. I I, I can't stand cranberry sauce. I know people work, try hard and they want to bring something nice. I can't stand, my wife has done it, you know, made a beautiful one, but I can't stand Cranberry sauce made on someone's counter with round things in it. I know those are the cranberries, but I don't care. Give me the pulverized one that slides out of the can and lands on a plain plate with a fatty blop and the two rings around it. I want those rings. I love those rings. 
smooth cranberry, and two deep rings. Not homemade cranberry sauce, ocean spray, okay? Does that make it clear enough for you? If I didn't think I would ruin our Thanksgiving for my wife and kid and our seven guests, I would have gone out, you know, before the whole thing and gone to the local Ralph's. I, I would have gotten four cans of ocean spray cranberry sauce. I like that stuff. I love it. But I, I think I'd, I think I might get killed if I ever brought something like that in. And, and by the way, I, so I'd like to say to every, sister-in-law, every friend of a friend, everyone who brings homemade things, you know what? Save your time next year on the cranberry sauce. No one wants it. Even if someone does, I don't want it. And this is my house. And this is my island. And by the way, skip the homemade green beans too. Again, folks, we all eat salads and veggies 364 days a year. There should be nothing green on Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, get out. That's what That would be the next step. In fact, you know, since you brought those, get out. Just take your stupid food with you and eat it in the car. Okay? Now, I, uh, of course, I'm, I'm not a complete idiot. I'd have to walk my wife and her sister downstairs to our bar so they could have the time to catch up and they could have the time to have a drink together and relax. And mainly <laughs> so that they wouldn't hear me. <laughs> Hear me hold forth and rant. Here's a good motto for Thanksgiving. Keep it simple. Heavy, hot, moist. Oh, wait, that's me. Uh, all right, well, you know what I mean. You know what adjectives you need. Turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and cranberry sauce. And, and you know what? That's kind of it. And gravy, good gravy, real gravy, thick gravy is terrific. And I, you know, I didn't, by the way, I, I probably shouldn't feel this, but every time a brother-in-law or a guy friend of mine makes something healthy himself and then brings it, you know, I look at him, I take the sauce, you know, pan, the glass pan with the tin foil on it, and I take it from him and really have to resist swinging it right back on his head and saying to him, you know, what, what is wrong with you? Nobody's here to eat healthy today. Go pour yourself a big drink and eat some barbecue sauce. That'll start you out. Or, you know, get with, you know, uh, one of my wife's aunts. And, in fact, you go home, too. Take this and go home. Get out. The best part of Thanksgiving, it's at the end of the day. And I hope you know this, too. But the greatest meal on Thanksgiving Day is at midnight. It's the one, oh, folks, you know, that after a full day of eating and a long day of eating, it's almost physically impossible that this happens. But when you finally stop around six or seven and it's midnight and everyone's gone and the place is clean again and everyone's gone. Have I mentioned everyone being gone? And your wife and kids are in bed and you're in your bathrobe and all washed up and you can finally let out a deep breath and pad into the kitchen in your white sweat socks. You're not just hungry. You're famished. How? I don't know. Doctors don't know. But you could eat a horse at midnight at the end of Thanksgiving Day. That's when the greatest meal on Thanksgiving is. The one where you open that refrigerator and the light pours out into the dark kitchen and you say a prayer of thanks or just laugh and go, <laughs> and you see a platter in there of sliced turkey and all the plastic containers with the fixings. You pile it all onto a clean plate, zap it in the microwave, tiptoe downstairs to watch the start of a James Bond festival with a refrigerator full of cold beer. I bet the Indians didn't bring that to the pilgrims. So I want you to... Do what I do. And you know what? Have a great Thanksgiving. Have the meal you want. Have the one that really means something. And yes, give thanks. That's when you look up and say, you know what? Thank you. No, the pilgrims didn't eat anything you were eating on Thanksgiving. But we do. We can. 
Sure, watch a little football if that's what you want. Sure, watch a Thanksgiving movie if that's what you want. But what's even better, you know, after the meal, sit down in the living room. We don't have a TV in our living room. But you can get all your guests and a couple of your kids in there. Everyone fits in. And all the men do the same thing. You know, unbuckle the top of the pants and kind of zip it down just an inch or so so that you can let out that breath and, oh, okay, oh, boy. But boy, oh, boy, and then still look forward to that that midnight feast. You know that, folks, and I know it. And that's why we're friends. We know the same things. Homer is Homer and Pluto is a planet, and old-fashioned Thanksgiving stuffing is really good. So remember, as always, if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to and someone there who cares about you, folks, the game's over and you've won. And that's the greatest thing to be thankful for. Be well, and I'll see you here next time. <laughs>